Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here, and welcome or welcome back to a new video on the channel. And today, guys, we're going to be continuing our AFL 2023 three game match reviews for round five, which is the gather round of the 2023 AFL season. And in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the middle three games from round number five. All right, so the first game was Brisbane versus North Melbourne at the Adelaide Hills. The first game um, ever in the Adelaide Hills, and I'm not sure whether it'll be the only game may return to the Adelaide Hills, not quite sure, but it was an absolutely amazing atmosphere there at the ground. Uh, you could see all the pop-up um, pop up grandstands for the day to seat every single person or to seat as many people as they possibly could that went into the game. But it was Brisbane by 75 in the end, 22-20, 152 to North, 12-5-77. And despite Brisbane's um, interesting first term, from there on they just dominated throughout the rest of the game. Their defence was a bit sleepy early on, uh, letting North kick three straight goals to be 6-24. But then after that, it was just North Melbourne's defence who shut down. Brisbane got the ball out of the middle, rocking and rolling into their forward half. And then from there, it was just an absolute domination. And there was no way, no way that North were going to come back. Um, and I mean, even when they were 27 points down, it just didn't look like it was going to happen. Um, just because Brisbane just was still dominating. And it took them a little while to put them away in the end, though, despite rain coming on and off. But it was their one, two, three, four, five, six goal burst, which put the um, yeah, which definitely put um, North Melbourne away. And then they continued that good form into the last term to get a very comfortable win. Lockie Neal, thirty-seven disposals, drove down her five goals. He could have easily ended up with way more. Uh, One hundred twenty fancy for Dana Harris as well. Six tackles for uh, Liam Shields and Josh Dunkley. We'll go to the player stats now. And it was Joe Dana who, who did really have a big day out. Uh, 120 fancy, 116 for Neil, 110 for Zorko, 102 for Dunkley, 98 for Hipwood. North's best on the day, 96 for Sheezer, 94 for Ashcroft. Goals behind, five goals, three for Danaher. He probably should have at least walked away with six. He missed um definitely uh, definitely that very easy shot in front of goal. Four goals, two for Hipwood, four goals, one for Cameron. And Jaden Stevenson was the other man which kicked four goals, and you could really say that he did keep his side in it for longer than they really should have been in it. Uh, and Charlie Combin, two goals, three, two goals to Barry and Rayner. Uh, and then one goal, two for four. Such a great player for the Brisbane Lions. He's definitely a very handy man to have in that Lions team. 37 disposal for Neil, 31 for Sheasel, 25 for Dunkley, 24 for Zebel, 23 for Ashcroft, Davies, Uniac and Howe. We'll go to Mark. 13 for Danaher, 10 for Hipwood, 8 for Zorko, Logue, Taylor. Tackles now, 6 for Dunkley and Shields, 5 for Zorko, Wilmot, Combin. 33 hit outs for Goldstein, 26 for McInerney, 5 for Combin, 2 for Danaher, Fort. We'll go to team stats now where... Disposals were relatively even, but the Lions went by kick more, found plenty of uncontested marks, uh, way more handballs so used for North. Inside 50s was a domination in favour of the Lions. Um, clearances were relatively close, 37-35, but out of the middle, 22-16. So, yeah, but their defence's ability to win it back for the um, Lions was great. 15-19 to 19 stoppage clearances, North weighed. North made plenty of turnovers, and Brisbane, every time a turnover was made, they were going to score off of it as well. They looked so dangerous. 118 to 77 marks, so many uncontested marks as well. 33 to 9 inside 50, that's just a domination right there. And there were plenty of these which were uncontested marks as well inside 50. You find your man, you look up, you're, you're in a tight spot, and there's just another uncontested mark, really easy, 30 out directly in front. Um, North's defence just went to sleep. 17 to 8 contested marks as well, so pretty big domination. The line did leave for most of the game. Took them a little while to put North away, but they just waited for the right moment and walked away 75-point winners. All right, now to potentially what could be one of the upsets of the round. Essendon versus Melbourne at the Adelaide Oval as part of the double header. Essendon 15-14, 104 defeated. Melbourne 11-11, 77. The Bombers won by 27. And it wasn't just like a two-point win. It was a 27-point win. And the good thing was for them is that they managed to hold that lead very comfortably throughout that whole second half. And their big, and their big men played a big role in this big win for them. So it was a very even first half, really, after... Well, very even first quarter and a half. 
the Bombers did definitely have the um, did have the chocolates in the first half, uh, sorry, in that first quarter. The Ds, though, they wrangled some momentum back at the start of that second quarter. But from there, it was just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven goals consecutive to the Bombers uh, throughout quarters two and three, which got them on the winning path. And the Ds didn't score for like an hour or something like that. And... Yes, Ben Brown was out, but they still do have some decent um, forward firepower. Nobody, not even a goal was scored from any time in there for the Ds. Um, and you can see they're goalless in that third term. So they have seven goals, five by half time, by three-quarter time, seven goals, seven. And even though the Bombers only had three of their own in that third quarter, you know it's over by three-quarter time. You really do, especially because it's pouring with rain in that last quarter. Um, the lead it gets a little bit bigger for the Bombers, and then the Ds kick a couple late to, uh, yeah, peg back the margin as much as they can. 41 disposal for Oliver, three goals for Draper, uh, 109 fancy for Merritt, 10 tackles for Will Setterfield, Will Snelling. So now, AFL fantasy, 119 for Zach Merritt, 115 for Viney, 108 for Oliver, 105 for Parrish, 104 for Petrarca, 100 for Setterfield, 97 for Shield, 92 for Laverde and Langdon, 90 for Snelling, three goals straight for Draper. He was big. Two goals for Pickett and Fritch. Two goals for Langford, who got the job done as well. Two goals for Melksham, Hind, Martin, Phillips was the other one with two goals. Stringer, a little bit um, inaccurate with one goal, three. Um, again, he was inaccurate last week and again this week. But Phillips and Draper were the two big ones. They kicked five of Essendon's 15 goals. They were massive. They were big marking targets and they were forcing Stephen May to yeah play on a direct opponent. He wasn't allowed to go and do what he normally does well, which is his intercept marking. 41 disposal for Oliver, 35 for Merritt, 34 for Parrish. Marks now, 8 for Laverde, 7 for Heppel, Ridley, Petty, Langdon. So you can see that May's not on there. How many did May get? Let's see. Uh, where's May going to be? Oh, he's a long way down this line now. May. Three marks for the game. That's definitely not his. That's not his normal. If you can try and shut down those demon defenders, you can break past them. Ten tackles for Setterfield. Snelling hit out twenty four for Grundy. Twenty one for Phillips. Eighteen for Draper. Four for Van Ruin. Three for Tom McDonald. But yeah, as soon as Ruckman played, big games, big games in this win. So relatively even. Those first starts, 57 to 55 inside, 50 in favour of the Bombers. Clearances still in favour of the Ds, 33 to 43, 11 to 17 centre, 22 to 26 stoppage in favour of the Ds. Um, so it was actually quite relatively even around there. However, marks, 89 to 71, 15 to 9 inside, 50. Especially like when you've got Draper and uh, and Phillips down there, you know that you could that they can um, clunk a nice contestant mark, 11 to 7. Um and still actually kick relatively straight as well, which is great to see for them. Uh, Bombers did leave most of the game. They won the tackle count as well. Uh, but, yeah, in the end, this is a really big win for the Bombers. All right, now to the final game in this three-game match. It was Port Adelaide versus Western Bulldogs. Saturday night at the Adelaide Oval as part number two of that for, of that double header, which included Essendon and Melbourne. And then this game and Port Adelaide won by 14, Port Adelaide 10, 10, 70, Western Bulldogs 8, 8, 56. Despite it being a very up and down, exciting contest for most of the night where Port Adelaide did lead for most of the game, but it was really around um, clearance and contested ball as to who won this game. And in the end, Port Adelaide, after having a way better last quarter, won in the end. Probably with one of the best quarters of the game, to be completely honest. Most high-scoring quarters of the contest. This game was raining, and it was raining throughout the Essendon-Melbourne game, and that meant the deck was still going to be wet. However, it was still pouring throughout this game as well. So very interesting stuff there. After Port Adelaide got off to the flying start, They'd already shut down the Bulldogs in that first term. In the second quarter, it was definitely the Dogs that we showed some bite back. Three goals to two. Port Adelaide had 5-8 by half time. Missed a couple of relatively simple chances. And again, in that third quarter, kicking one goal two. That was the quarter where the Dogs came back. And that was the quarter where they looked their best, the Western Bulldogs. Uh, they looked really good in that third quarter. And then the final term, Port Adelaide kick. They kicked four goals to one and... Four goals straight as well. If they had to kick four behinds there, they would have easily lost the game. But, yep, they had their kicking boots on in that last quarter and roared home to a 14-point win. 35 disposals for Adam Trelaw, 
Four goals for Waitman, 123 fantasy for English, seven tackles for Bonson Pelly. So dogs kick eight goals, Waitman kicks four of them. A little bit concerning because none of their other tool timber really got firing. 123 fantasy for English, 110 for Butters, who came alive in that last quarter, including that icing on the cake goal. 108 for Rosie, who's always who's always important for them. 106 for Houston, 105 for Trelaw, and Bonson Pelly, 100 for him. Played another really important game and this time didn't have the heroics like he has in the last couple of weeks to help his team hold on to it to a win because he's been great in those last couple of weeks and those upset wins versus Richmond and, and Brisbane. Uh, but he still played a really important role this game as well to keep them well and truly in it. Four goals for Waitman, two goals for Marshall and Burn Jones. Those are the only multiple goals for us for the night. 35 disposals, four for Law, 32 for Butters, 28 for Johannesson, 27 for Liberatore, 26 for Wines and Rosie. Marks now seven for O'Brien and then six for a ton of other players. Tackles, seven for Bonson Pelly, six for Drew, Rosie McRae. Hit outs, 27 for English, 15 for Lysette and Lobb, 14 for Dixon, eight for Finn Lace and one for Norton. Team stats now. And it was relatively even again, though. Dogs wanted to go by Hamble more. Port went by more kicks, 57 to 51 inside, 50 in favour of the power. Uh, way more efficiency inside, 50 as well for the power. Um, clearances were pretty even. 37-43 hit outs, 39-40 clearances, 8-12 center in favor of the dogs, 31-28 stoppage in favor of the power. Um, the dogs did have way more uncontested possessions. Um, however, yeah, those were more in the middle of the ground by the looks of things. Uh, Mark 70-70, Mark's inside 50, 8-8, eight, eight. contested Mark's 8-7 in favor of the power. So, yeah, Mark's and Mark's inside 50 were locked, 7 each, 8 each. Uh, Port did lead for most of the game, and... In the end, they definitely did deserve the win, I reckon, despite the dogs really did come hard. But it was really going to be down to who won that last quarter it was going to win the game. And in the end, Port Adelaide were just too good. Got a massive Sunday of footy coming up at, at the Adelaide Oval with a double header and one game at Norwood, Geelong on West Coast. Well, this is going to be a really interesting game for the Cats. They need to try and, again, try and bank back-to-back -back big wins to show their season's back on track. West Coast, they've been trying to do this new style of footy, and they need to see if it pays off or not. They need to take some risks in this game. They need to try and, they need to try and change something up to look a little bit more dangerous. GWS versus Hawthorne, that's probably going to be a pretty boring game, I'd say, but the Hawks they need to get something together, though. The Giants, I reckon they can, they can get a nice win here. And then the Pies and the Saints, the game which probably everybody wants to see, uh, is the last game of the round and definitely on the Sunday, the most interesting of the three. And if you want to have a little look at some of the gather round results so far, here they all are. And if you do want to go ahead and check out my other three game match reviews for the first three games, make sure to go ahead and do that as well. Here is the current ladder, and I don't think much will change for the top eight today, except for that Collingwood St Kilda game, which is going to be absolutely massive. Will the Pies jump up on the 16 points with Essendon and St Kilda, or will the Saints go undefeated and continue what a season has been so far and get a little bit of a gap from the rest of the competition? Uh, if they get to 20 points, they'll be uh, four points, a game clear of the next, which is Essendon. All right, that's going to be it for today's three-game match reviews. I'll be doing three uh, the three-game match reviews for these games as well. But anyway, though, thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Sitting guys, and there is another video on the channel. Thank you guys all so much. Subscribe, everyone. Flame for the out.